satellites are the most common example of a PIPA satellite. Now they consist of a cube, 100 millimeters on each side, and weigh less than 1.33 kilograms. Uh, today there have been over 40 cube satellite launches, and over 100 universities all over the world have worked on the cube satellite projects. Uh, cube satellites generally hit to right along uh, with a commercial satellite into orbit. Uh, this allows uh, launch providers to keep uh, cube satellite launch costs down. Uh, there are many providers in many different countries, including USA, uh, Russia, India, China, and that. Uh, NASA will also launch cube satellites for free if they have a scientific experiment on them that they think is worth doing. Uh, so, Wollongong University's cube satellite is um, the main goal is to develop a reliable, cost-effective, versatile platform on which scientific experiments may be conducted. Uh, if the satellite is a success, then the hardware can be sold to other interested parties. Uh, in addition, the satellite will provide a platform for the university to test uh, various normal communication systems. So there's a preliminary design of the satellite. It includes uh, three separate radios, two high data rate radios and one low data rate radio. Uh, the two high data rate radios are for the ground connection and inter-satellite communication, and the low data rate radios are back up in case they fail. Uh, it's based around an Android platform, which is an interface to an FPGA that controls all the systems in the satellite. Given that the um, high gain antennas are going to be used, attitude control is very important, so the attitude control system must have up a one degree pointing to be able to get the antennas to point at the ground um, very accurately. So the uh, high data rate radio is the focus of this project. Um, it's a basic quadrature modulation scheme as shown here. Um, it uses a local oscillator synthesis based around a PLL from a reference low frequency oscillator. This goes into a standard phase splitter to your uh, two down and up conversion mixers that operate similar to a double balance mixer but without the um, power requirement. And uh, that keeps the power requirement for the whole radio down. The uh, data converters are also integrated into one device which keeps the uh, power requirement for the data conversion uh, much lower. So the data rate for well, the data um, converters operate at about 45 megasamples per second, which is more than enough for a basic uh, link that is capable of about uh, 10 megasamples per second. So that will give a much greater speed link than what's previously available with the AX25 standard, which most satellites so use now, which is uh, 9600 uh, kilobits per second. And uh, yeah, so the, the uh, power amplifier for this radio has to have pretty high gain to give about one watt output power. This is much higher than most um, ISM band radios are capable of. So that's going to be quite um, difficult to design. And, um, this satellite is also designed to be able to operate a multi hop network so mm -hmm. that you can communicate from the ground to one satellite and that will talk to other satellites in the network through the uh, two radios. And, uh, so the goals for the radio were uh, high bandwidth down and up link, not just the high bandwidth down link that most satellites have now. It's also going to operate half duplex operation and low power because we're on a huge satellite, so solar power is all we have and there's much limited when you only have 100 millimeter sides. 
It's got to be small to be able to fit in the uh, satellite and to high transmit power at uh, one watt. And uh, that's all we have for the radio so far.